The next stop is on the radar radio. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. Yeah. Yes, sir, baby. On the radar radio. Yo, special guest in the building, the Bay Area in the building. My guy, Son of Man, O2 in the motherfucking building. We still winning. And we still winning, bro. Come on, King. How you feeling? Blessings, man. Shout out to New York. One so of my excited favorite to places. have you, bro. So, why is it one of your favorite places? Man, the energy. New York feel like, so people don't know. I, I'm from Filmo. I lived in Hunters Point in San Francisco. They call my neighborhood Harlem of the West. And they call it that because after the Harlem Renaissance, people from Harlem moved to San Francisco for better opportunity. One of really? the first cities that allowed black people to be in the Navy. Okay. So my energy of my city, we literally call our neighborhood Harlem. So you feel me? With the jazz and everything. So when I come to New York, we was walking around Brooklyn. I've been to Bronx. I've been to Queens, Staten Island, all these different places. When I feel like when I'm here, I feel like I'm at home talking to the youngsters, enjoying life, and just being in the midst of the energy. And you gotta realize my city been gentrified. So when I walk through my neighborhood, I don't really see too many people who look like me. We made a movie about it, right. Last Black Man in San Francisco, that I was fortunate enough to be a part of, speaking on the gentrif gentrification. Shout out Jimmy Phil, shout out Joe Talbot, shout out Jonathan Majors, Tim Millie, Gunner, everybody a part of that, Milk, Javon. So when I come here, it feels like I'm back to my roots. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And that, you got to be in touch with your roots when you want to grow. I love that. So you don't have any family that was originally from New York? Uh, Schenectady, upstate. Okay, Albany, okay, okay, you know what okay, I'm saying? Okay, and then okay. my another part of my family, they from Rhode Island. My last name is Gomes, so you know that's that Cape Verdean. And then my other part of my family from uh, South Carolina, Hemingway. Wow, that's interesting. I didn't, I, see, I did not know this whole mm. Harlem to San Francisco. I didn't know that Come this on, was like man. a thing, man. Man, New York, so really, New York to New Jersey is how LA is to the Bay. But mm. San Francisco specifically and the Bay Area relates to the New York to New York because you got to think of San Francisco or the Bay Area cities like the New York boroughs. So San Francisco like Manhattan, Brooklyn like Oakland, Queens like uh, Vallejo, uh, Staten Island like San Jose. Um, what am I forgetting? The Bronx like Richmond in mm. terms of the integrity of it. But it's still its own style. You know what I'm saying? I like that. But in terms of the feeling, the flavor, what you're going through. But it's nothing like New York, though. Same way yeah. it's nothing like the Bay. Right. You know I mean? so. That's beautiful, man. On, and, man. And the story of how I found you is like so funny, too, because it was like two summers ago, right? What you, you was about to say? I was making sure y'all could hear me. Y'all could hear oh, me? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so. Two summers ago, I was dating somebody, and she was from the Bay, right? Also, not the only person I know from the Bay. I had a lot. Of, I had a lot of friends from college. Shout He's out saying to he got he got a lot of Bay Area women, man. So he got a lot of <laughs> mess with you. Chill, let me be my silent sniper <laughs> in peace, bro. Let me be my silent sniper. But in real peace. G's moving silence like lasagna type shit. But so I so I dated her for that summer, and she had been putting me on the Bay Bay Area music, mm -hmm. and someone that she had put me on to was you, because she was like, oh, he going crazy right now. Again, I think it was not too long after the remix with Forty and and, and Pilo. Shout out um, to them. Yeah, shout, shout out, out to Clayton William, uh, who works with, with Empire and just a dope engineer, producer, everything for help orchestrating that. And also shout out to all the HBK for sending me them verses. One day we will drop the HBK version of Big Step, and I promise. Oh, we're going to talk about that. But but I want to get this off real quick. But she put me on to you. She was like, yo, Son of Man's going crazy right now. You got to reach out to him. And this one on the radar was first starting to really kind of move. And I had uh, we had followed each other, and we had been talking in the DMs for a long time, for literally... Oh, a year and a half now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. we finally made this shit happen, man. Man, so, I'm thankful. Shout you know, out to her, man. <laughs> you know who else helped helped uh Shanti, or uh, Shante or Tay. Okay. You know what I'm Shantae, saying? Yeah. From Millhouse. She was the one who followed back up and was like, bro, you need to go do this. Like Gabe's a cool ass dude on the radar, going crazy. And me, I think in my career sometimes, like I'm a step behind because I'm moving and doing so much stuff. So that's on me. So I appreciate your patience and me locking in with you and coming out here. You know what absolutely, I mean? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. We're having a funny conversation because I told you I was I, I dated this girl for four days. Yeah. And you said that sounds like a well, Bay Area love story. Well, no, we dated for like two months, two, two, three months, but like mm -hmm. we was in a relationship for four days. That's all that matters. You know what I'm and saying? you said this is a Bay Area love story. Yes, man. That's your summer fling. That's your thing where, you know, life is cyclical. And when I say life is cyclical, it means it moves in a circle. Okay. And it's this life moves like time. Everybody think it's linear. Feel me? That was the cycle that y'all needed to go through in y'all life in order for you to get what you needed. Now, if you would have never dated that young lady, it would have never been a full circle moment to me sitting on this couch, pause, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like on some stuff to where once you, what y'all did, completed what it needed to, 
feel me? The relationship was no more. Some people here for a reason, some people here for a season. And luckily and fortunately, no shade to her because she's a dope woman because she linked us together. But yeah. you may have exited at the right time instead of staying for longer than you needed to. You mm. know what I'm saying? You know, you put something in the oven too long, it get burnt. But you putting something in there just enough, it's going to get hot. And that's what we are. And that's what On The Radar are doing. I'm, <laughs> I'm Yo, just saying bro, anything. You're saying anything. No, you're really saying anything. <laughs> but it's like it's like you put together words so well Man. that it's like, yeah, you know what? He says he say he My might shit. be saying something. You ever seen Don't Be a Menace? Yeah. Like, and you know that when he went to jail with yeah. the dude, he was and he was cooking bacon while he was talking. He was like, run fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, knick knack, patty whack, give a dog a bone. And like he's putting hella stuff together. But nah, it's a Bay Area fling in the terms of the Bay Area is similar to New York in terms of the trends. So you mm. sometimes we move so fast in life to where you get the fulfillment of what you needed from a situation or a relationship. And sometimes it may take a year. Sometimes it may take a day. I told you I was in a relationship for 12 hours. How, do you, how are you in a relationship for 12 hours? OK, so I met this young lady. Right. We was at a party. You feel me? And I was like, OK, she's smooth. And instantly I'm young. You feel me? And this is one of my, my younger days. How old are you? I'm not going to lie. I was like 12 or 13. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> it mattered to me. <laughs> It mattered to me. So, you know, I asked her out on, on the spot because, you know, back then in the Bay, we had something called functions. When you go to a function, yeah. that's where you go at a kid to specifically go and dance and have fun. Because right. dance is in our culture. That's how Yikin came about. That's how, shout out to Prices and the whole Yikin movement. That's how all this stuff came about. So you used to go there and dance. So the girls that was ready to have fun, you feel me? You want to be around them. I asked the girl out immediately. And within 12 hours, we was no more. See what I'm saying? Well, I mean, you were 12. But man, see, but that, what I'm saying is, nah, fuck with you. But now that, <laughs> that's dope that you had to, I don't know who uh, ended it with who, but that was dope that you was able to have the fulfillment of that relationship and still move on. You know what I mean? So, right, right. Mm -hmm. And now we're here to the, now, now we're here, we here now. Hey, it served its purpose. You know what I'm saying? Right. Exactly. I mean, so. So the other remix, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about it. So what happened with it? So basically, it was just, I think for us, it was time. Like it was timing. And I was taking recommendations from people who already had been in the industry. And it was like, you know, the best thing that you might want to do is to let this remix, remix out right now because of the timing of it. You got a relationship with Pilo. You got a relationship with 40. Put it out. See what it does. Uh, initially, me and Quake, we wanted to do the whole HBK remix because, you know, I, in the uh, opening line of the first verse, I said, they shot cool, John. I got a gun now. So we felt like it would have been dope to get all of them on there. It just We just didn't put enough priority on it. So that was on us. You feel me? So instead, we had those two verses so we said like, let's just run with this so you know we took that and went there but i'm open to doing regional remixes to everywhere you feel me because even though we've been pushing a song three years january 15th it'll be three years it still has legs and it's still going further because like six months ago i went to michigan and they saw me and i was like bro I didn't know what you look like. I love that song. We walking around uh, Brooklyn. Fine. I see the kids, and I'm like, y'all play 2K? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, y'all heard this song before? And they're like, oh, bro, I heard this before. And it's like, it's, coming out here was necessary because, you know, social media is dope. And I, I've utilized social media to a certain extent to help move me forward. But my real appeal is connecting with people. Mm -hmm. That's where I really feel the strongest. I really feel enjoyable. So for me, it's like the Larry June method or the, the method of really getting to the people, similar to how Larry June would go to places, connect to these people, have bike rides, interact with the people who really consume his music so they can know who he is, just not as a person, but put a face to the brand. You know what I mean? Mm. So, you know, but the remixes, you know, maybe one day I do genuinely want to put them out. I just don't know when i don't have a timeline but back at back uh but time is cyclical so at the end of the day you know it's gonna come back a time where we gonna put that together you know what i'm saying what we do is we make timeless music so it's never really uh uh too old or yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what i mean so for you for that moment like we're having 40 and and, and pillow on the record too like you know i've talked to a couple people who have had from the bay who have had like these really incredible moments of having mm -hmm. those two legends on it right yeah for you like you know obviously it being almost three years since the original track came out. What was like that? What did that moment mean to you at like that time? Especially coming, because it was like right out the pandemic too. Mm -hmm. It was legendary. Uh, for me, it was like, because who don't love Pilo and E-40? You know what I'm right. saying? I love my Filipino people. Hey, my ganda, bunda, gadito, salamat. You know what I'm saying? We keep it lit. And 40 is just a legend, period. Like, so... I grew up with... That was crazy, but that was fire. Come on, man. You know I love... <laughs> that was crazy. My, one of my best friends, shout out to That's Jay crazy. Diaz. I got ex-girlfriends. Shout out to my sister, Tamisha uh, Church. Man, I, I love Filipino culture. I love Pinoy culture. So it's like when Pilo got on there, 
it was like, and then on, to another degree, Pilo knows my manager and his brother. Like, they play basketball together. So it was a full circle moment. Like, and it's just like to be tapped in with the culture and to have one of the greatest just human beings get on a song with me, yeah. I was juiced. And then we produced, an, or we made another song called Get That Dough and putting that out. And then 40 getting on there, like, you know, I'm good at uh, emotional regulation. So when 40 first liked the post, I was juiced. I was like, oh, we got to go meet him. We set it up. We figured it out. And I, I kept it cool the whole time. But as soon as I left from me and 40 first meeting with the team and everything, I got juice like, oh, he 40, you know what I'm saying? Because I didn't want to make it weird. So for me, it was um, gratifying, uh, not satisfying because I don't want to uh, stop at that point and call it like, okay, we could just chill, but gratifying in a point like, okay, what I'm doing is connecting to people. You know yeah. what I'm saying? To enough to where these greats have seen me and it's like they uh, believe in me enough to not only recognize what I'm doing, but to add fuel to the flame. And they gave me some game. What they had the we had the verses like six months before we dropped it, maybe longer than that. But they was like, don't put it out yet because we want the song to continue to grow its legs so that it's not your biggest song that you got out. Because if we get it on right now before you've established it as your own, it's going to be our song. And we want you to be now. That's the reason why the Big Step in Remix is the second of my highest streaming because they gave me that game and said, wait. because And that's game like, you feel me? Like People always say to Bay, we don't support each other. I think that's... I think there's, it's like a, a goldfish in a bowl type method to where it's a small market or not as big as other markets. So you're only going to grow so mm -hmm. big before you have to get out. But in terms of support and believing in each other and using each other to get to the next level, we do it very well. So, man, and to make a long story longer, man, I appreciate them. I'm thankful for them. And yeah. it just made the movement that much stronger. It solidified it. You know right. I mean? You know what's cool? Like, I like seeing you, like, go from that and obviously getting this recognition within your community and then being able to, one, you know, like you say, go around – the country touch all these people but then also like do like really cool give back stuff with your own community like i recently saw the the the, the court that opened up mm -hmm. oh yeah with zendaya yeah shout out to zendaya what was that whole thing like what how how'd that come about like so, and how are you a part of it so basically zendaya she renewed the court in a neighborhood in West Oakland. Okay. So it was all Zendaya. And they just happened to tap in with me. It was like, hey, Stunner, we know you work with the community. We know you love being around. Could you please come out and just play in a celebrity basketball game? I'm like, I, I, I be hooping sometimes for fun. I just got, <laughs> I just, I, I tore a part of my, AC, I mean, Achilles. So I've been chilling for the, like the last three months. But I was like, man, I'm happy to come and just be around. And it was dope to just be in a community. I'm from San Francisco, but to be in West Oakland, to be a part of that community, Community, it was dope to be around that. And then shout out to Zendaya and Tom Holland for not only investing into the community, but also actually pulling up. And Zendaya right. being there, Tom Holland being there, uh, along with all the hoopers that was there, along with Stunner Man 02, the still winning brand, I feel like it really gave uh, a motivation to the people and say, yeah, damn, like man. these people are, are the biggest stars in the world, and now they're here. You know what I mean? So I thought that was hella dope. Right. Because I'm sorry, I don't mean to no, interrupt you. No, you're interrupt me. I didn't mean to interrupt, but like something no, that when I was watching the video, like I thought it was cool because like I don't think it's too often that we always see, you know, actors, actresses. We see it sometimes, but like on that level, really back in their community like yeah. that. Like I think that's been like a big criticism like New Yorkers be having with J-Lo. Mm. Is that J-Lo don't really be in the Bronx like that mm. or J-Lo don't go back to the Bronx. But like, you know, obviously J-Lo's older, so it's like a little bit different of a situation. But regardless of the point, like seeing Zendaya and seeing her be amongst the kids and the people on that court yeah. like that to me was a very beautiful thing and to see everybody else who was there including yourself like i thought that that was really cool because that makes like that moment and that memory for a lot of those kids like even that much more like special like oh i got to be around all these ama amazing bay area people mm -hmm. like it gives them something to look up to too yeah it was empowering to see somebody who is so high and we consider with high regard to still be grounded you right. know what i mean that was hella dope you said everything though that was beautiful i mean oh thank you man yeah, thank course, you man. with the nba 2k stuff right yeah. like was it in the initial copy of the game or did it get added on? So like the it... NBA 2K23, it was in the initial copy, I okay, believe. Okay. So like it was a part of the songs that was added in there. They hit me like maybe like six months before. Shout out to um, everybody at NBA 2K. I gave them the song and then we was locked in. So it's been in there. It might have been added to some versions, but I know it was a part of the initial. 2K, yeah, yeah, 23. Yeah, it's a part of the initial one. And then fortunately, we've got another song with me, Mazin, Fire, and Simba uh, right now called season that's on nba 2k 24 Fire, so bro. back to back years on nba 2k that's raw and then now we also got the uh 
Huh, I'm big stepping. Four, five on me look like I'm. We got that in Madden now, too. We got the dancing Madden. Come on, we still winning. And that process was just everybody. Go do your ass cap and BMI. This one, this one, this one. Yo, everybody, go do your ass cap and BMI. I'm going to tell you why. When they tapped in, it was either me or my management. We saw it. And I said, wait, how did you find me? And they said, we looked at the email that was on your ass cap. So make sure you do your publishing. I own 100% of my publishing. Yeah. So what that means is I produce, I put out all my publishing. I claim all my publishing. So I was able to get a video game placement because somebody looked at my email that was on my publishing placement. So there you go, man. Do that, man. ASCAP cap, BMI, Song Trust, Sound Exchange. ASCAP cap, BMI, Song Trust, Sound Exchange. Put the ISRC code into there, man. He just gave you free game, honestly. Come on, man. Huh? Huh? He Come knows on. what I'm about. That's hey, his man. Go, go listen to MCI by Stuntman02 and LaRussell right now. Shout out to LaRussell for pioneering, doing his thing, having what a pie else? chart. I remember sitting in a room with LaRussell and he showed me his pie chart, how he do his splits. Levin, uh, legendary, revolutionary. LaRussell is a dope dude. Me and him both adopted the mindset of the 30 day run. Uh, the 30 day run was told to me by my previous management, 1015. Uh, Larry Junda made songs about it. You see the success, LaRussell. Russell got with it. Yep. If you're an artist, do a 30-day run. And what a 30-day run is, you take content and you post for 30 days straight. You feel yep. me? Just go on a run. That's how Big Stepping got popping. My manager, Nate, right now, he saw the song come out. He saw me hitting the dance and Big Stepping. <laughs> and he, Nate said, bruh, you need to go do that dance and everywhere in San Francisco like Junebug is doing. This is around the time during the pandemic where Junebug was hitting the... Hey, and then... I was in a media, uh, uh, meeting with my previous management, just a fly on the wall, and one of the people part of the management suggested like, hey, Stunner, uh, you're here. You might as well participate in the information that we're telling uh, them to do. So unofficially, I said, man, for 30 days straight, I'm going to post this song and see what, and see what it do. May, I believe that was May 2021. Man, you feel me? Fortunately, the song is still growing, you know what I'm saying? So, you know. Hey, man, if I could tell any artist, just lock in with that. You know what I'm saying? Lock in with the social media 30-day run. You see what it's done for me. Yeah. You see what it's done for Larry June. You see what it's done for LaRussell. Man, LaRussell going crazy, revolutionizing the game. So keep going. I was going to say, like, even, like, from a podcast standpoint, like, we post on every day. Right, Calvin? Mm -hmm. we, 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 yeah, and, and today Genius. and this week alone we gained – how many followers we gained this week? On Instagram, yeah. What's up? Can y'all help me manage my social media? I need help too. You know what I'm saying? No, he's mine. Okay, okay. <laughs> keep him, keep him. Sorry, sorry. Now, okay. even 24K Golden too. Like, when I talked to Golden, he was doing this on TikTok. Yeah, like, that's how he really is. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. before. So it's like, man, I'm thankful to be around all these dope people who gave me game and I, I allow it to, you know, help my brand and whatnot. But in all due respect, you do a great job with your social media in general. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think you need somebody to help you with it because even when I'm like going through it and like the consistency of the post, like I was watching the video you posted um, when we were recording this a couple of days ago, it was snowing in Jersey, I guess. And you was just running outside in Jersey. <sighs> With your motherfucking shirt off. Come on, man. I'm like, I was going to do this interview with my shirt off. I was like, nah, nah. Shout out to the young lady over there. She's like, put your shirt on. And I was like, yeah, she's a dope artist. She about to come kill it from Philly. Uh, I forgot her name. Don't be mad at me. Saucy, Saucy. She finna go Saucy. stupid. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we're going to keep it lit. But yeah, I, my thing is what I, I need to focus on is being intentional with my posts and also doing the right things to elevate me from being a regional, semi-national artist to being a, a complete brand, even though we grow in the brand, and getting it to go to that solidified national and global. Right. So that's what I'm going. Like, your platform is national, global. And you know what I'm saying? Y'all did the dope things where you service artists nationally. I came all the way from California to New York to come lock in with y'all. Right, I came here for that. I, we just seen somebody from Chicago, from Philly. Bro, you had Drake on here. Drake? Drake? You had Drake on here, bro. Mm -hmm. Rapping, viral. So that's how you, but not only are you servicing artists who are up and coming and dope from all type of tiers, but you're also serving, servicing independent to underground to mainstream. So right. that's a national global brand. 
what's fundamental to and still winning is doing is going from a regional to national to global. Right, you're trying to get to that point. And you need somebody. You see, uh, La Russell is an amazing example. La Russell and Tieta, they run good company and along with their whole team, and they have. Tieta's focus on the social media, like treat it like a job. You need to do that because this is a business. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's my that's my tidbit. I be going in sometimes. Nah, but you like really good at like doing motivational shit too. Of course. Like what? you might like Son of Man gotta do like his own motivational like it's in coming series man that's that's jordan gomes right there jordan gomes stunner man 02 workout plan we got the six doctors of life that's what when you watch this freestyle that was that this is what that is a part of eat a salad man and we motivating people not only to beat them be their best selves but to stay consistent and disciplined because out of consistency and discipline is what you feel like that's what you're actually getting you, you're what you think you're getting from motivation is what you're getting from consistency and discipline so when we come do that stuff and i go yell at you and i tell you to be your best self and stop acting like x y and z and be a better version of yourself that's what we doing and eat you. a fucking salad eat a fucking salad man you don't need that hoagie you don't need that pizza man eat in moderation though because you got to have balance that's what life is about right you know right so the sa so like it's part of like a project with all the, with so, the salad the, and the so i have a, a method i call it the six doctors of life this is okay. uh information that's been around for years so the six doctors of life is diet uh water or hydration yeah. sunlight or being outside stress level sleep and of course, the last one is exercise. You know what I mean? So what I'm doing is I'm making a project, dropping a project around the end of January where it's making a song that has the trigger words and the, 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 the energy of what we like to listen to, but with the subject matter of things we need to hear. So like what I just performed or what, what I performed earlier was Eat a Salad. And that is a song where I'm turned up, turned up. I'm cussing at you. I'm saying all of this, but I'm the stuff. I'm talking about ashwagandha uh, and echinacea. I'm talking about golden seal, and I'm talking about all these different herbs in here. I'm telling you, eat a salad is just a metaphor to man. Get your money, get focused, condensed, but also get your diet right because the diet is the real medicine. You know what I mean? So you know, and that's in coordination with these doctors of life. If you get enough sunlight, you get enough rest, that helps you with everything else in your life, not just with your physical, but with your mental, emotional. Emotional, psychological, moral, financial, and environmental. It helps you deal with all the things. And what I just named from the mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, psychological, moral, and financial, and uh, environmental, that's life theory. That's how we break down life in order so we can understand and perceive the world and the dimension that we're in. You know what I mean? So I know I was saying hella mm. stuff. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if he's a genius or he just puts some stuff together, but nah, that sounded hey. good. It sounded good though. S somewhere in the middle. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere in the middle. You mm -hmm. know, it's it, it's crazy because it's like it's cool to see how far you've come. And like I also kind of like like seeing you like um like I saw you did something with my boy C5, right? Oh, that's with, oh C5 going stupid right now. I met, he just had a baby too. Oh, congrats, C5. Congrats. I actually met C5 during the pandemic. He was one of the few zoom in he was one of the zoom interviews I did. During that time, very early days of on the radar. Mm -hmm. But I fuck with C five. What is the relationship with you and C five? Man, that's one of the most genuine dudes I ever met in my life. From North Oakland, they call it Ice City. Man, shout out to everybody from that's North. That's why Oakland. he got. Does he have like any ice? Like any cold? Never mind. He just caught and now he just caught on on a mic. Pause. You know what I'm saying? Pause. Yeah. You know what I mean, so he going stupid when he uh, start rapping. He just he just went viral again for rapping about Taraji P Henson. That was hella dope. Mm. But C Five is just one of the most genuine persons I ever met before in my life. He reached out to me. He was like, "Bro, let's work on this song." We made this song called "Don't Hold Your Breath." You know what I'm saying? And then it became RP to to late Angus Cloud. It was one of his favorite songs. You know what I'm saying? Me and Angus, we actually just did a movie together. My second feature film, a freaky. Tales is about to come out in Sundance uh, uh, January 18th, mm -hmm. so I'm excited about that. But C5 just, man, he's like a, we don't talk as much as we should, but every time I talk to him, it's a quality, genuine, yeah. intentional, and he's just a dope person, and he just, he, he just like focused, and when you talk to him, you could be yourself, like, yeah. it's not one of them things where you feel like, okay, I need to withhold or do this or that's how I feel like when I'm talking to Guap Dad, a lot of people that's from the section, even when I'm talking to you. Yeah. You know I mean, so it's like C5 is just, I'm going to call him a, a celestial being. I'm going to mm. call him a, a being from a, I, I reference myself as a being from another dimension. You know what I'm saying? He, C5 is really sit here energetically to make sure the world still has uh, some people who have good intentions here mobbing through the world to make sure we don't just 
crash and burn and run ourselves into the wall with all this stuff because no shade to nobody but man it's an oversaturation with us talking about us killing ourselves and talking about us yeah. putting poison into our body and putting looking down on each other you gotta have some balance especially motherfuckers disrespecting the women they were disrespecting each other we praising the wrong shit there's no reward for being a good person so you see people like C5 it allows you to know like okay it's still a reward to go being a good individual yeah. you know what I mean so I like how um, well first of all congrats on the movie too thank you man um, appreciate you. long live angus cloud of course man, for sure. i was actually gonna bring that up too about the movie and angus because i saw you had put uh the post up damn he be him. doing his research man yeah. shout out to gabe man yeah I saw shout you. out to tay from millhouse too yeah, yeah i saw you put the post up you said uh sending prayers and love to angus's family he brought positive energy everywhere he went thank you always for supporting my music and it was dope that we got to be in a movie together love you man day 70 day 727 a big step in um with with how how did that loss affect you so and how did you recover from it too or how are you still working to get you know so you remember i was saying like time is cyclical yeah it goes in a circle so i saw angus on a set of a movie that's the last time i saw him right of the movie for the freaky tales okay, you know, freaky, freaky tales, tales yeah. directed by uh, i believe anna bolden and ryan fleck the directors of captain marvel you got normani dominique thorne tom hanks uh Pablo Pascal, uh, Jay Ellis, a whole bunch of dope people in the film. I'm excited about that. The movie, the sex, the segment I'm in, Simba is in there too. The segment, oh, I, yeah, it's raw. Uh, Angus is in there as well. R.I.P. Again, but the segment I'm in, it's think of a Bay Area version of Pulp Fiction. That's what's coming out. And the segment I'm in is focusing on Too Short, who just happens to not only be my tourist brother and big homie and OG, but also my mom's favorite rapper, so full circle. But I'm going to get back to Angus too. But um, So that was a full circle situation. Because when he last time I saw him was on set. Mm. When he passed away, his homie, his name is blanking <laughs> right now, so forgive me. He sent me a video from like 2019, 2018. He sent me a video performing at Angus's birthday um, way before he, I think he took that leap to move to New York and way before he was really getting known for acting. But I performed at his birthday. I think they paid me like, I don't even know if they paid me, but if they did, I appreciate y'all. And we got a video way before my hair is hella short. I'm going to find a video and I'm going to send it to you. Please, I'm gonna show it I would to love you. to see it, yeah. So my hair is hella short. And the only way you know it's a video from back then, because Angus had on the same shirt that um, he always, he got this shirt that he loved, man. It was a fresh ass shirt. It's very colorful. But I, my hair was hella short. That's the only way you know the video was from back then. Yeah. So uh, right after he passed away, his folks sent me this and he said, bro, thank you for coming to perform at my brother's birthday. He really loved you. Uh, he he appreciated that moment. He didn't know who you was, but he always remembered it. So then when we made, I made that song with C5, he had a relationship with Angus, but Angus was asked to do a playlist and he put me and C5 song on there. When I did Summer Jam, uh, uh, Angus was there and I had like some uh, merch and towels. He bought everything. Like he said, man, where, how can I support everything? Let me buy it from you. He, he, he overpaid us. And he's like, bro, I love what you're doing, Stunner. You hella cool. Uh, I think what you're doing, you got to keep going. I believe in your movement. Everything about you is dope, bro. We locked in. And you feel me? We took a picture. He hit the big stepping with us. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. And then... Full circle, man. I seen him on set and I'm like, bro, what's up, man? He's like, damn, you in this movie? I'm like, hell yeah, man. And then we just exchange love, just a, a normal interaction, you know what I mean? Yeah. So when I'm not going to act like I, me and Angus was the closest person. I didn't have his phone number. We followed each other on Instagram. But it's one of those things where it's like, even though we didn't talk every day, when we seen each other, it's like we picked up where we left off. And then every time was a genuine interaction. Yeah. It wasn't like I'm trying to be somebody different around you or X, Y, and Z. It's literally could get around each other and be ourselves. And that's what I love. And then one thing about Angus, he just supported. Like he just supported. And that's why you I do my best. I'm not I'm not perfect. You feel me? Nobody's necessarily perfect, but I do my best to treat everybody with my most genuine feeling or try to get them some love or something like that because you don't know who a person is. You don't know who a person is going, what, is, what they're going through. You don't know who a person is, is going to be. And as you, the safest thing, the best thing for you as a human is just treat everybody with respect and love and treat everybody how you would treat uh, anybody else. Treat the CEO same way you treat the janitor because you never know. The uh, janitor might have dressed up for a day and said, man, I'm going to act like, I mean, the CEO might have dressed up for a day and act like the janitor just to see 
see how people will interact. You know what I mean? That's the book, The Alchemist. That's the book, 5 a.m. Yeah. Club. You know what I mean? Dressing up. A, a king, don't judge somebody by what they got on. Judge them by the character they got in their heart. You know what I mean? And that was Angus. You know what I mean? Dope as hell, man. So... Even though we didn't talk every day, even though we wasn't like, I'm with you, I'm talking to you every day, it was just genuine, and I appreciate that. Man, rest in peace, Angus, bro. Man, for sure, man. Um, Legacy is still here. He's in another dimension. He might not be here physically, but he's here spiritually, you know what I'm saying? Facts. What's the movie? What's your role in the movie, by the way? I play uh, Lenny G. So Lenny G is based on the character Freddie B. So people don't know, if you don't know, Too Short moved from L.A., to Oakland when he was about 12 or 13 years old. And then after that, he locked in with this dude named Freddie B. Freddie B is uh, uh, known as the first Oakland rapper, you know what I'm mean? I believe he also produced as well. And Freddie B and Too Short used to come together and it was they innovated independence, independent distribution as we know it. Trapping out the trunk, selling cassette tapes that they pressed up or had somebody press for whatever amount of money. And they got popping because they do something what the great C5 does now. They they make custom they make custom songs for all the drug dealers. So what something uh, C5 does that's hella dope, which I actually want to put into my repertoire as well, is he make custom songs for not only important people, but for brands. He did one for Kevin Hart. He mm -hmm. did one last year. He did all of Black History Month. Every day he did one, and he just makes um, dope songs for people, jingles. Mm -hmm. So, but... Basically, Too Short and Freddie B would go around Oakland and make uh, custom cassettes for people. And they got popping because all the dope dealers would be like, bruh, I need my own custom cassette. So they sell them the initial one for the low. And then when they double back and be like, oh, I need another one, they attack them and be like, well, you feel me? And now they got exclusives. Unfortunately, Freddie B, I believe he got incarcerated for a moment, like so many of our great rappers did. Uh, but then by the time he came out, Too Short was popping, you know what I'm saying? But Freddie B had already did what he needed to do to be solidified within the culture. So they rebranded uh, the character as a DJ, named me Lenny G. And I kind of play that role to where um, I don't want to give away too much but i just play a I'm, I'm the catalyst in the movie you know what i'm saying so if that makes sense i i i, I basically start something you know what i mean so gotcha gotcha mm -hmm. they'll have to see the movie when it comes out yeah you got to bro you coming to sundance with us right sure january 18th bro come on i guess, utah. I'm, I guess I'm coming to utah yeah bro they coming too man so we're gonna keep it lit man but i'm excited man it's my second feature film um so i'm excited you know what i mean i got a movie in, in the works as well that we write in we doing the revisions on it so i'm just excited to Take this leap. I love music, and that's my nucleus, but I feel like acting is more natural. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Word, man. Well, look, before we get up out of here, man, mm -hmm. anything else that you're working on that the people got to know about that we have coming up? Oh, we man. Movie? We got movies coming out. We got, we're got we going to give you some music a uh, whole bunch of times. And then we got the workout program going on, too. We finna start the Stunning Man on 2, still winning. Pull up and just come work out. We ain't put no name on it yet. Just come rock with us. Right now, we want to, 2024, we taking this year personal, like Dion said. You feel me? And we, we, we taking it personal in a way that I'm coming for everything that's mine and everybody who needed me and everybody who wanted more from me I'm giving it to you not only in terms of content and, and and just everything that you desire from me but also in terms of what I feel like I need to give to the universe yeah I feel like I need to give that 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 holistic that 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 balance of you know everybody telling us to do put x y and z poison in our body man let's go eat a salad let's go work out let's go take a walk yeah. let's enjoy life i'm not telling you not to eat that pizza but if you've been eating pizza six days in a, in a row man take a break let you do a cleanse go on a fast you know what i'm saying and, and give your body some greens give your body some water watermelon fruits with seeds in there you know what i'm saying look up some herbs that help you off the top of my head ashwagandha uh chlorophyll uh echinacea golden seal anything like that can help you uh uh bear berry um what else um uh, Man, all right, that's elderberry. Look up all these herbs and see what they do and put them in your body and give it. It's not going to hit immediately. Give it three weeks. You know what I mean? So that's what I'm giving to the world. And I feel like that's my responsibility to the universe. You know what I mean? So, and other than that, we're just putting positivity into the world, hanging out with some beautiful women and just enjoying life and putting that creativity into the world, man. And we hanging out with Gabe P, yes, too, uh, man. Come on. Well, look, bro, I that's appreciate it. you again. Um, run up the freestyle out now. Go check that out. We're going to be on streaming, too. So go run that up. Uh, before we get up out of here, anything else you want the people know whether they can follow you at all that good stuff. Now's the time to do it. This camera on the right, right here. Uh, go follow me uh, on the radar. Oh, god dang it. I'm just playing. Go follow me at Stunnerman02. S T U N N A M A N 02. 
That's Stunner Man 02. Go follow the brand. Still winning 02. Go stream all the music. And most importantly, believe in yourself and don't let nobody count you out. And if you ever feel, get, feel down, look yourself in the mirror and say, we still winning. There you go, Come man. Well, make sure you go run up everything he has out now. Go run up the freestyle. Go show him some love. Go show him some support. Love is free. Support is free. But try right knew that. Till next time, Stunner Man 02 on the radar. We out. Bow, my guy. Hey, you raw at this, man.